Hello, Mikoy. Good to see you again. Hello, and I'm really happy that we will be talking about quite pleasant subject for me, which is prototyping. Uh, I really do enjoy create prototypes. I think that is something that pushes projects quite far, um, quite often. Maybe let's start with how our clients uh, think of prototypes. Uh, do you maybe meet in your work some misconceptions about them or um, stuff like that? Yes, there are a lot of them <laughs> okay. uh, regarding the con misconceptions. And uh, we were speaking with Wojtek about TRL levels okay. uh, of, uh, of technology readiness. And uh, we mapped it into prototypes. So, yes, it's uh, difficult to understand when we speak or we say the word prototype on what are we talking about in, in, okay. in particular. Because um, prototypes are different on different stages. We've got to make sometimes a lot of them uh, before we finally know that the product that we are developing is, is okay, is what is the product that we wanted. Okay, mm. so maybe let's go through our, our uh, design process and let's maybe uh, match each stage or each phase with a different type of the prototype because I believe that um, this is the easiest way to maybe um, categorize them. But uh, first thing first, uh, I've prepared a definition of a prototype to maybe settle up uh, some knowledge at the very beginning and to uh, create the common ground for uh, everybody who will be listening that. Okay. Mm, a prototype is an early sample, model or release of a product built to test a concept or a process. So in the very definition we have that uh, testing, that exploring and something that it's not finished yet basically. Uh, so. But something important appeared as well as release. So it's something that's more involved in software, I guess. Uh, or release on a, to, towards some sort of a group, I believe. Because, okay. Yeah. Um, so uh, what types of, the prototype, of prototypes we have at the earliest stage of the projects? At the stage, for example, of a pre-design. Do we prototype during the pre-design? Or is it too early? We can, we can prototype, but usually we call it not a prototype yet. We, we tend to use it, the word or the term uh, proof of concept okay. because we would like to know if our concept, our idea is doable, is feasible. So we are making a proof, a physical proof on how to uh, assemble basic ideas or basic principles of uh, mechanisms of um, electronic components that build eventually build up a concept that we want to develop okay i see so it's like uh, checking if uh, looking for validation of an idea yes Basically. yes we want to see if it works if it works then we have to make it work as a product Okay. And it's a different topic. So a uh, proof of concept is uh, something to build on uh, later on. So um, during later stages, like for example, creating the concept, uh, do you happen to prototype or do you use some prototyping technologies? Yes, we okay. utilize a lot of them because each project or each product that uh, we are designing is a bit different but uh, of course technologies are not so different uh, that uh, for each product we have to develop a new technology for prototyping yeah. it's not it's not that complicated but we still use um, a bunch of different prototyping techniques um, that are the perfect match for the particular project that we are developing for example if we are Mm, designing a big industrial machinery uh, there is a common understanding that each manufactured part is some kind of a prototype True. so we when we design this machinery we do not prototype it at one-to-one -one scale we can make some small 
printouts of our ideas. We can uh, use some uh, foams or clay for for the for the shape uh, discovery, but uh, it's not that common in the industrial machinery. Uh, speaking of uh, those manual or those craftsman uh, techniques, craftsmanship yeah. techniques like um, uh, like clay design, like sculpting, sculpting yeah. molding, using uh, paper com paper for prototyping, using all these different techniques to achieve a physical model, is usually utilized when we are designing for ergonomics when we are designing for things that are going to be in the near or close contact with a hand, with, with a human. So basically, uh, while looking for the best way to interact with the potential user in the future. As well. Okay. So uh, you've mentioned that on different stages they are used. So I believe we can say that prototyping is a type of a tool that a designer can use while working on a on a project to uh, discover a different uh, aspect of that project uh, from starting from shape uh, upwards towards the more ergonomic aspects and uh, and so on. Yes, but we can call it that, uh, you know, a picture says more than a thousand words and a prototype is something like picture but in 3D, so it <laughs> yeah. says even more. Okay, awesome. Uh, these are not very functional prototypes, right? These are more of the uh, prototypes of general shapes and looking for forms or looking for... Uh, Speaking of a conceptual on face, on conceptual yes, face, of course. Yeah. These are things that are looking as they might look, but they are not performing any function because it's not that stage. Okay, so uh, during the later stage, right? During the uh, mechanical design, we happen to prototype uh, functionalities as well, right? Maybe yes, you could it, tell us a little bit about more. Yes, it's, um, you can understand it as a development of the proof of concept, because in proof of concept, uh, we had a project uh, like a watch winder, for example, uh, when we didn't know if the mechanism that our client had in his mind was if we were able to design this mechanism within all these movements that yeah. this mechanism had. So we had to design a proof of concept, just try to build this mechanism without thinking about the style, without thinking about how to mm, cover this mechanism, yeah. but just to make ourselves sure that this will work. And uh, of course, then if we proved that it will work, we had to jump into the conceptual phase because we wanted still this mechanism to be um, to be fitted into quite a nice looking um, enclosure because it was a high-end product so we needed it to be um, looking good as well um, but we didn't care about the mechanics okay yeah and when we jumped into the fourth phase of the of the design it's called the mechanical phase then the adventure started yeah. <laughs> to to translate this proof of concept into the real world product the real world working mechanisms using parts that can be sourced from different manufacturers and still fit in the space that we designed uh, at the earlier, earlier stages yeah. awesome i believe that it shows that prototyping you know, it's very broad term that the already has at least three levels, the level of uh, validating the idea, the level of validating looks and the level of executing functionalities and improving them. Sure. That's, a, mm, that's quite a lot. Quite a um, lot and yeah. different prototypes worth mentioning. Yeah. So uh, maybe let's uh, switch towards talk about techniques of prototyping because you've mentioned sculpting, you've mentioned uh, using paper and uh, I believe there are some more uh, fancy ones as well. <laughs> there are, yeah. yes, definitely. And I think that all of us already heard about um, 3D printing, which is one of the most popular 
a technique of prototyping uh, nowadays. Um, there are different reasons uh, why 3D printing got so popular. Because uh, it got more affordable. Mm -hmm. uh, even we as regular people, regular consumers can buy um, a small 3D printer, household 3D printer, that is uh, making your daily use parts. Yeah. Um, but it's not that advanced. It's not, it's not that uh, good for more sophisticated prototyping. So we've got a lot of different other technologies in 3D printing that we utilize to fit the need of the prototype. Yeah, the uh, purpose of prototype. The purpose of the prototype. Okay. Mm, so yes, 3D printing is one of these technologies. Um, we've got a bunch of other technologies that are more, mm, let's say, major, like okay. CNC, mm -hmm. because uh, CNC machining is um, quite older technology, but sure. still very useful uh, regarding uh, sheet metal, for example, because we've got lasers today. We don't have to make uh, very expensive tooling to cut out a really crazy shape out of a sheet of metal. Yeah. But still, it's uh, it might be perceived as a, uh, a more uh, expensive technology than stamping, because yeah. stamping is just a process, but you need a tool, a tool for that. Yeah. If you use laser, you don't need a tool. A single part is, uh, is, is, is more expensive, but still you, you have this part quicker and you can prototype, you can test. So okay. this is another one. Um, the third in a row might be, um, might be just welding, for example. Mm -hmm. If we want to make a desk, a chair, something that has a structure, a construction uh, that needs to withstand some uh, Mm, some forces, we need to make prototypes out of materials that are, are going to be used. So okay. welding uh, or any other metal processing technologies are also uh, prototyping technologies for us. Yeah. Mm, but on the other hand, we've got more craftsman, as we mentioned already, uh, techniques craftsmanship, like uh, clay, like paper, like um, foam, yeah. sculpting. Carving from foam. Carving, right. yes. So all these different techniques are serving different purposes. And w with creating things, we cannot forget about finishing things, like paper sanding, uh, like painting, um, covering with different materials like flocking. Yeah. Um, some, uh, some technologies that use in chemistry like chemical vapor, vapor deposition, when you can reach a metallic looking part mm -hmm. out of a plastic part, yeah. because you can put a thin layer of metal on, the top, on top of, uh, of yeah. the surface of, of a plastic mimic part. Or uh, mimic the future uh, finish of, the, of yes. that surface as well. Yes, you can, you can simulate the real world product that you are going to deliver with these, all, all these techniques. Um, and you can simulate it pretty close to the end product. Of yeah. course, some problems appear it takes time. It takes time. Yeah. It costs money. It costs money yeah. <laughs> but but if you want to be sure that this product is uh, going to hit the market and uh, make success or be successful, uh, you should think of prototyping as a part of the pr of a process yeah. of a design process. That is two hundred percent necessary to do. <laughs> yeah. So um, regarding the technology or techniques used for prototyping, uh, it seems that uh, the purpose of the prototype determines the technique that will be used. The purpose, is it uh, testing the looks, for example, and mimicking the different surface finishes? Or is it, for example, uh, validating the construction and welding some steel elements to see how they act in the real world? Yes, you can test the look and you can test the function. Yeah. So 
of course, the final product should test the function and the... Should pass the test. Should pass the test, <laughs> yeah. sh should have passed the test. Uh, but, uh, of course, the, the final product is something that is already optimized is after several, several rounds of tests. And you don't want to build uh, on each step the whole product representation with all these little details that mm -hmm. are going to be on the finished product unless you have tested this one thing, yeah. uh, like, um, like the strengths or like the look if it's important to you. That's why um, in car industry uh, there are concepts that are made out of clay and then the designers look at it and think, okay, the form is okay, but still needs some tweaks. Yeah. So they jump into, into CAD system and do the tweaks after clay modeling. Yeah, so they may be combining two worlds of software creating or software uh, modeling with uh, physical modeling. Yes, and this is something that we are also doing as industrial designers. It's not just the automotive mm -hmm. world. So we are uh, spending more and more time in CAD software, uh, especially when we are uh, focused more on delivering finished prototypes of, uh, of, the, of, the, pos of the future products mm -hmm. uh, instead of beautiful concepts. Um, because concepts are uh, might be really awesome and crazy, but they won't be manufacturable yeah. yet. Because sometimes these concepts are, mm, you know, a concept of a thin uh, display that you can find in your iPad or any other tablet in the world was uh, unbelievable achievement of uh, human uh, human yeah. uh, of human ideas and engineering uh, even 20 years ago so something happened the technology developed and these concepts that were out of this world have been already on the market for several years yeah. so uh, something that, uh, that so i do not want to say that conceptualizing and making crazy concepts is bad yeah but if we are working today and want a product in a year we have to use the technologies that are probably already on the market uh, so yeah. we should deliver the concepts that can answer all the requirements of the um, of the client mm -hmm. and still be manufacturable within technologies that are on the market or are going to be on the market in a year. Okay. Okay, thank you. Um, you've mentioned that uh, the prototyping is a process that is 200% necessary for developing the, uh, the product, but maybe uh, could you tell us a little bit about um, how costly it can be or how to uh, prepare yourself for the cost that it will bring uh, to developing a new product? Okay, we can start with uh, as low as a few dollars if you print it with your um, FDM 3D printer or it might be as high as several hundreds of thousands of dollars if you are prototyping a full-scale um, industrial machine. Yeah. Because it all depends on the level of the prototype and the thing that you want to test but to make it more um, understandable we can uh, call an example of a remote control for your tv for example because it usually is an assembly of a few parts it is an assembly of the pcb that is inside you have to build this pcb or to cover this pcb so that the user won't destroy it um, and won't uh, mm, damage the, the, the internals of the remote so that the remote can serve you for a year, mm -hmm. maybe more, <laughs> uh, for years uh, if possible. So you have to make the remote out of, uh, let's say, top uh, part of the case, bottom part of the case, 
and most probably a, a little, little large, a little large. large and a lid that yeah. covers the battery compartment yeah. because you don't want to disassemble the, all the uh, remote control just to um, change, yeah, change batteries. The, the, uh, the batteries because even if uh, most people would be able to reassemble this remote there might be people that are not able to do this so we have to think of the usability of this device this small uh, uh, remote control as well so we've got basically three parts we don't say we don't speak about the key part uh, how to make it possible to, to work so three basic parts and if we want to just take uh, a look at the remote control that we that we already designed if it fits our hands if it is uh, well balanced in our hand regarding the the point of touch mm -hmm. uh, we can start with clay model we can start with foam model which is a little bit lighter than uh, than a clay but clay still is um, heavier than the, the, the actual product to be yeah. made so we have to balance it but the most uh, the most possible way to prototype a more refined prototype is to 3d print these enclosures out, out of some plastic material um, so this is more close to the final product but still you can test the form so that you can print a single piece of plastic that makes the form mm -hmm. you don't have to split it yeah. into the top the three parts you top mentioned. bottom yeah. and and the lead yeah. you don't have to do this so this prototype could be cheaper because you've got only one part to deliver so your vendor is going to take less time to, to, to spend less time on finding this prototype in his in his uh, order because uh, usually when you 3d print part externally you are just uh, one another customer in the in the 3d printing chamber because yeah. there are a lot of different printouts and you have to find the, the right one for you so this might cost as little as 10 or 50 dollars if you if you order it by, by yourself um, or if you want someone to prototype for you okay. it might be a little bit more expensive because he has to spend time to describe what he wants so um, this is the beginning stage if we want however to show you or the potential customer a prototype that resembles the product that we would like to be on the market so it has the surface finishing it has the painting it has the rubber buttons working it's resembling the fully functional prototype or fully functional product i'm sorry it's going to be more expensive mm -hmm. because it's going to be hand finished and this hand or manual work will cost time and time is money so uh, when speaking of uh, costs it's about two thousand dollars for example for this kind of prototype that you have in your hand mm -hmm. and it is a one piece in the world of your design so it cannot be as cheap as the final product because you ha you don't have tooling you don't have automated uh, process of finishing you don't have all these things that are making the product cheap you have to make it once um, so that it takes more time and more money okay so um, it seems that like uh, the each prototype pushes the uh, the project further and uh, maybe helps to avoid some big mistakes or big errors that may appear during the for example preparing tooling for injection molding right yes because i was mentioning the costs from perspective of prototypes yeah these might be huge if you think of you know a remote control should not cost more than ten dollars uh, when when, when you're manufacturing, manufacturing it yeah. but um, when you want to manufacture something which is this cheap you have to invest you have to do it properly a lot of money into the tooling okay. and the tooling is expensive and if you are not sure that the tooling is going to manufacture the 
the part that you wish, it's a waste of money. True. And the tooling might cost, might cost uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars. Even millions. So if <laughs> we compare it to $2,000 for a single prototype, and even if you try to uh, 10 times, you still spend 10 times less money than if you didn't prototype. Than if you would have to uh, correct the, the mold or yes. even make it again. Yes, sometimes you have to make it again and yeah. that's the problem. So that's why the prototyping is beneficial. Um, and it's from this perspective, it's not expensive. It's of course a necessary expense, but it's not expensive. So it's uh, saving, no, it's um, spending smaller quotes to maybe in future save a thousand of dollars. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So um, the prototypes are very present in our daily work and uh, in the processes uh, that we are participating in. But um, can you think of any examples of uh, existing prototypes or prototypes that are accessible on the market for customers? Yes, <laughs> but <laughs> the problem is that it's difficult to find the physical ones. But uh, if we go into the software world, mm -hmm. yeah. I think it's quite easy to show you that everything is a prototype. Um, it's of course not that black and white so that the physical products are finished products and they are not prototypes and uh, software products are, are all the time prototypes, no. Uh, but there are some fun functionalities that, for example, if you are uh, a power user of some kind of a software, you are able to test new functionalities before uh, all the users of this software are able to do this. Um, this is called some test program or beta program that you can subscribe to and test the software mm, that is already on the market because it is, yeah. but it is not fully deployed. It is a prototype that you can test. Mm, there are also some MVP products that are on the market. Uh, I can't call one single example now, but uh, several years ago, a Netflix was one of them. Like mm -hmm. uh, it was a platform that was built for streaming and they were using uh, third party servers that uh, were able to Mm, stream some amount of uh, of data mm -hmm. and you cannot cross the border without uh, in further investing money into their own servers and uh, their own infrastructure or building bigger one that is bought from another third car uh, third party companies so they had a prototype they launched this platform so that it could be it could be a failure, it could it be a success. It could be a failure, yeah. it, it could be a su success. But in the times of YouTube and all the different streaming services, it, I think it was a good business model to, 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 to test, test. Yeah. and to be quite certain that this business will, mm, will be okay in the future. But of course, um, even if you are using Gmail or smaller piece of software from from this big company Alphabet or mm, or Microsoft, you are still exp experiencing some prototyping phases of even your operating system. Like those, all those updates are just making this product better. So this is iterative process of developing, prototyping and deploying this uh, into, into the market. Um, so it's quite difficult to find these examples in the real world. Because in the physical world. In the physical world, because if you, um, if you try to put a prototype on the market, it has to work at least 99% good. Yeah. Um, I was mentioning Kickstarter uh, in, in a talk about uh, TRLs. So this is also a platform that shows prototypes. You can see that this is an idea that is materialized in s somehow, that has some form, 
but the shape, form and functionality might change completely. True. So um, these prototypes are still test units that might be further developed by, by the manufacturer. And th the difference, the big difference between the physical product and a software product is the time to deploy to the market. Because if you think of prototype of a software, you can make it uh, this week and next week after several tests, because users are all over the world, it is tested, it is validated, you can uh, make it in weeks. I mean the functionality, a yeah, single one. one. One of many. But if we are speaking of a product, it has a bunch of functionalities that without one functionality, this product will not be the product that you are made, that you are it was meant to, yeah, be. meant to be. So you have to develop all the functionalities, you have to put this into one single device, and then uh, you can call it uh, that it's finished product. So I think that we all understand that it takes more time. Yeah. And the time is uh, the value mm, that is the most important uh, in product development. And I mean physical product development. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. So uh, prototype can serve a different function. They pushing the projects uh, always for forward, I would say. Uh, and I, I think that we can say that prototype is an, something, is an object that does not have a production line, right? Um, that is something that's uh, usually made with one go to... Uh... Okay, so a uh, prototype is something that does not have a production line, but uh, I believe that it helps all the engaged parties, uh, I mean the manufacturers, the client, the designers, uh, to work towards implementing a plant product. I Correct. So. I agree with you 100% and I believe that mm, design without prototyping cannot happen. Yeah, uh, good strong words to finish our conversation with and thank you. Thank you.